Yo! What's up? Hi, hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, welcome to another video. Welcome to today's July bookish reset, bookish check-in, telling you all the things that I read in the last month, what I'm currently reading, and what I want to be reading in the next month in July. Um, hi, how are ya? I just wanna first start off with, um, number one, it is pouring rain outside, thank God. It's literally rained one time here this entire summer, and I've officially become an adult because now I care about when my lawn gets watered, you know? First off, if you've seen a few of my videos, if you enjoy my content, I would love it if you'd hit the subscribe button. If not, just enjoy the video. I hope you have a great time here. So today, let's talk about what we did, what we read, what is going to be read. I am participating in Summerween this July. This is the first time I've ever participated in Summerween and I'm so excited. I have become an Olivia Reads a Latte Dan over the last year or so. She's like my favorite bookish content creator right now in the moment. I just love her content. And so I'm so excited to participate in her readathon Summerween. It is from July 7th to the 14th or 13th or something, which is so perfect. I thought it was the week after. I thought it was like the 14th or the 21st or something. And I'm going out of town on the, the weekend of the 14th. It lines up perfectly with my schedule, but at the same time, today is July 4th and it, the readathon starts in three days, so I better um, get this TBR up. You know what else? It was July 7th. Speak Now Taylor's version gets released. But yes, yeah, Speak Now's Taylor's version releases on July 7th, so that's the only thing I'm gonna be doing on July 7th. That calendar is booked. Probably that entire weekend, it's just gonna be on the background. I ordered the vinyl. Definitely gonna be playing it as I'm reading books, and it's gonna be a time I truly cannot wait to hear those secret, the, the vault songs and Dear John and Back to December. Oh my God. Oh, that early release that they did for the summer I turned pretty. Oh my God. It's just chef's kiss. Incredible. I can't wait. So let's just start off with what I read last month because I'm really excited to talk about it. And I really, really enjoyed the books I read last month. I finished an entire completely two, count them on one hand, books in June. And you know what? I think that's the first time I finished two books this year in one month. Actually, no, January actually had, I think I finished like five. The first book that I finished is Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow. I was reading this book for quite some time in May, late, late May and June. And I, baby, I love this book. It was so good. I don't even know if I'm reading books anymore, but like if I rated a book five stars, it would be this. Okay. Let me talk to you what it's about. So this book is about two friends, um, Sadie and Sam, and they basically meet in a hospital as young kids and they bond over the fact that they both love video games. And as someone who loves to cozy game on her Nintendo Switch, I loved this book. It was literally the perfect book, the perfect read for me at the perfect time in my life. If I had read this book when it came out last year, I would not have been into video gaming, but this year, your girl is. What I really loved about this book is it was kind of a generational friendship saga and you're following these two friends through so many different seasons in their life, throughout decades of their life. And it's just beautiful to watch how friendships can ebb and flow. And one thing I think I really took away from this book is I guess the power of friendship and that you don't always have to be best friends with someone right by their side, doing everything with them every single day, 24 seven. Friendships can also be kind of a silent bond between two people. And even though, you know, maybe you span distances or you're at different places in your life or whatever, you will always still have a core friendship with someone and a core bond and love for someone. And I feel like that was really exemplified in this book. There was a part at the end, like there's like this one chapter or section of the book at the end that I felt like did not make a whole lot of sense. As I was reading it, I was like, what is going on? So that's the only part that I that I had qualms with with the book. I kind of wish that it was either shortened or removed or something like that. I didn't feel like it added a ton to the story. That was my only qualm with this book. But overall, if you like generational family or friendship sagas, if you like video games, if you just like books about relationships and character building, this is the book for you. I literally bawled my eyes out. Tears were streaming down my face. If you wanna watch that vlog, it's gonna be linked down below, but it was it was a time, it was a time to be alive. And I love this book. 
probably one of my top five books that I've read this year so far. Book number two that I finished was Patricia Wants to Cuddle by Samantha Allen. So this book is a thriller. It's based off of a knockoff version of The Bachelor called The Catch. And you're following the final four contestants as they go to this island called Otter's Island off the coast of Washington or something. And there's just like a lot of weird things that happen on this island. There's been some people who have disappeared, actually many people who have disappeared and they've done like documentaries into trying to find this person, these people and like investigations and all this kind of stuff. And like no one can ever come up with the where these people go. There's just like very mysterious things that happen on this island. And this is the place where like the bachelor or the catch finale is being filmed. You're following four girls who are just the last four left. And you're also following the like producers and stuff like that of the show too. I rated this book a 2.5 star, honestly. It was a 2.5 star though that like you read and it's just a good time, okay? I was reading it, I was enjoying it, I was having fun with it. I'm like a huge reality TV stan, like, guys! I'm watching the new season of Love Island right now. I have just bandaged the first like 12 episodes in the last like two days. Oh my God! I am loving this season. I am, the drama, the love triangles, like, can we talk about it in the comments, okay? Back to this, back to this. I rated this a 2.5 star. Honestly, don't think I would recommend it to someone unless you're in the mood for like kind of a weird read. You need to be in the mood for the weirdest read you've ever read because that's what this is. I was reading the book and I was like, oh, cute fun time, cute fun time. And then we get to the end and I'm like, what is happening? What is going on? It was wild, literally wild. And you know what? Normally, if I'm feeling a book is gonna be like a three star, so I'll probably just like DNF it. But I knew this book was gonna be like a 2.5 star, but it was just like a good time, so I just kept reading. But yeah, that's how I feel about this book. They did have queer representation, LGBTQIA representation, which was great for Pride Month, and it made me honestly want to just keep reading more like LGBTQIA plus books throughout the rest of the summer. I just feel like I have a few on my shelf that are like perfect summer reads. I don't regret reading this. I wouldn't keep a copy of it in my library. I would say that. I would definitely pass this on to someone else, but um, I'm glad I read it. I don't regret it. All right, so those are the two books that I have finished completely in June, and I have two books that I am currently reading. Well, three books that I'm currently reading, let's be honest. Okay, let's just start off with the one that I'm actually like really into, absolutely loving. It is great. That is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. This is a memoir about Dolly Alderton's life and her just like, being young in her teens and 20s and 30s and dating and finding love and trying to figure out who she is and honestly it just resonates with me so much it's she's just kind of a messy 20 year old just trying to figure out her life and I love books like that I just feel like as I've gotten older in life I just want to find books that like I can relate to and I'm not saying I'm like a messy person I mean sometimes I am but for the most part I just feel like sometimes especially on Instagram and stuff you can just feel like everyone has their life put together everyone only puts their best foot forward on Instagram and stuff and it could just really get into your head like what am I doing with my life where am I going with my life and when someone talks about the realities of their day-to-day -day and how everything's not perfect all the time and how we mess up and we make mistakes and all this kind of stuff that resonates with me that is what gets me and makes me feel seen and heard and like i'm not alone you know and i'm really loving it the font is huge and uh the chapters are short and they're honestly just like cute little you know five to ten page chapters of like her dating this guy who was like some prodigy of someone i don't know like google or whatever and then she's going off and she's getting a cab to like two hours south of london if even you can even go that far at 2 a.m on a uh, Thursday night or something like she's just messy and like I just am feeling it I'm feeling this vibe again love reality tv love messy romance love all that kind of stuff and I just feel like this is it this is it so yeah I'm about 120 pages in and I'm absolutely loving it I just like binged read 100 pages the first day I picked this up definitely gonna be continuing probably gonna give this five stars would not be surprised if it's again in one of my top books of the year so love this okay and then the other one I I don't even know if I want to quantify it as currently reading because I'm not currently reading I, I don't want to quantify it as DNF because I don't feel like I've officially DNF'd it this book is trust by Hernan Diaz I read this book for a book club that I was supposed to have gone to last week or two weeks ago and I didn't finish the book and I didn't go to the club so doing great here's the deal 
first of all, didn't start the book in time. Did not even start the book in time to be able to read it in time for the book club. So that's on me. But when I did read the book, I got about like 100 pages in, 120 pages in, and I was just kind of feeling like, eh. It wasn't giving, it wasn't feeding my soul, it wasn't feeding my summer joy. This is a book about a, it's like a historical fiction set in like the 1920s, 1930s-ish during the time around the Great Depression. Basically, this man inherits a tobacco company from his parents and he essentially does not continue on in the tobacco business, but he continues on with investing the money and going into the stock market and he basically like opens up a brokerage firm and is like trading stocks and like doing all the things. He's kind of like a savant in finance and no one can figure out how he is like making so much money like the great depression happens and he like doesn't even he's not even harmed at all like not even a scratch he seems kind of socially awkward and like he doesn't really want to hang out with people that much but that was as far as i got about 100 pages in you know the thing that didn't hit with me is that they kept talking about all these finance terms and i literally had no idea i invest in the stock market so i know like the basics of stocks and investing but like I don't know what it means to short a stock I don't know what like all of these terms mean like securities and like I mean I know what a bond is but like all these other financial terms like thank god they didn't talk about cryptocurrency because what it just wasn't feeding my interest and I was feeling just really confused the entire time and like I didn't really know what was happening and so I just put the book down you know normally when I DNF books it's like a hard feeling like no I'm done with this it's just this is like a soft DNF maybe a maybe I'll come back to it's kind of just been sitting on my counter for a little while and just taunting me like hey do you want to read me maybe a book for later I don't know um but I know a lot of people love this so that's why I wanted to give it a try but yeah that is the other book that I started reading this month and then the last book that I am kind of still reading and also transitioning more into the July TBR because this is also on the July TBR. Um, I literally just picked, re-picked up the audiobook yesterday and I was loving it. And that is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, okay? I have this on audio because this is a chunkster and you actually think I can sit down and read this? Um, I don't know if I could. I have listened to the last, the, the first initial three Stormlight books on audio and then kind of read a little bit here and there. You know, it is a commitment when you commit to one of these books, okay? This is not a 10 hour audiobook. This is not something you can put three times speed on and just speed through, uh-uh. This is a 45 hour audiobook, me listening on 1.2 speed, okay? So I'm gonna be at this thing for a while. I am absolutely not gonna be finishing this this month. Like there is 0% chance, z literally, zero. Um, but this is probably going to be a book that I'm reading over the next, like, I don't know, three months or so. It usually takes me about three months to read one of these books. But I'm, I've been wanting to get back into audio again. And the audiobooks for these are amazing. Amazing. The two authors that narrate them are just incredible. They have voices for everyone. It's like, just a masterpiece in audiobook literature. Okay, if you don't know what Stormlight's about, it's essentially this massive epic fantasy by Brandon Sanderson. Essentially, this like world is in disarray and they are like fighting each other. It's just like a lot of layers to the world and it's just a big, wide epic fantasy. And if you are the type of person who likes epic fantasy, 100% would recommend it. It's very plot driven, also very character driven and there's mental health representation. There's like everything you could ever want just right up in this book, in this book, <laughs> in this book. I really, really love it. The first three, I've always given them five stars. They're always just a joy to read. And the, the, the immensity of this world, it's absolutely breathtaking what Brandon Sanderson can come up with. And it's just like, so cool to be able to be reading these as they're being released. I want to be able to finish this book by the end of the year because they're, he's already halfway through writing Stormlight 5. I want to be able to read that when it comes out. So that's the goal for some time this year, okay? Brandon Sanderson, we will be finishing the fourth in Stormlight. So shall we move on to the TBR? Rhythm of War is for sure on the TBR. Um, I just kind of put it in the currently reading because I am currently reading it. I'm probably like five hours into the audiobook so far, but let's transition into the actual TBR. Let's start off with the Summerween reads, okay? Because I am so excited about it. 
so excited. So there's five different prompts for the readathon for Summerween. And I have three books here that I'm interested in reading. To be honest, I mean, I usually can only read one book a week, maybe. So I'm probably only gonna be able to get to one of these. Um, but I put three on here and they're kind of fairly short. So if I could at least get two, I'd be pretty proud of myself. So let's talk about the first one that I wanna read. The, the highest priority on my list is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder uh, by Holly Jackson. TBH, don't know what this is about. I know it's a thriller and I know everyone loves this book. I was gifted this book by one of my subscribers, Colleen, thank you so much. And I'm just so excited to read this. My sister read it and she loved it. Everyone reads it and they love it. And I, I know it's a thriller, something about murder. I don't wanna know more because I don't wanna spoil it for myself, but I do know it's really, really good. Okay, also just quickly glancing on the back, high school. So maybe it's like a YA thriller, but this book will fulfill the prompt for thriller. Potentially, I'm gonna try and read in the dark because I'm hoping to read this before bed. I'm really trying to get in a mood of like reading before bed rather than going on my phone because it helps me sleep better when I read um, versus look at my screen. So yeah, so I was planning on using this prompt for the prompt of either read a book in, a dark, in the dark, which to BH, probably not gonna actually read it in the dark. I'm just gonna be sitting up in my bed and it's gonna be dark outside. Also, this fits the prompt for read a thriller and that's about it. I don't know if it's set in the fall. If it is, bonus points, okay? That would be great if I could get all of all of those three with one book. Uh, next one I want to read is Confessions by Kane Minato. This is a book that's been on my TBR for months and I feel like Summerween would be the perfect time to be able to read this. This is a book about a woman whose child dies and she accuses children in the classroom or something of killing her child. At least I think that's the plot. Yeah, it's like a confrontation between adult and student. And I think this woman is a like accusing a child or something of like killing her own child. I don't know, but I remember that's what the, I took away when I read the synopsis a while ago and when I listened to people talk about it on book two. This is a translated work of literature, which we stan. I'm trying to read more translated works um, and I haven't read a lot this year, but I want to read this one. And it's a short book, which is great. And I've heard this is a book you literally cannot put down, which again, my vibe, especially for some ruin. So yeah, if I can finish A Good Girl's Mind to Murder, definitely gonna be going on to this. And then the last one I have for Summer Ween fits the prompt of a manga and that is Spy Family. I've had the entire Spy Family collection for a few months now and I've been wanting to read this book so bad. I hear such great things about it. It's honestly just gonna take me like an hour to read it and I don't know why I haven't read it yet, but I just, I feel like I'm hyped for it and then I also just haven't prioritized it enough. But I want to prioritize it for Summer Ween because it's specifically a prompt. Read a manga or graphic novel or something. So as far as what this one is about, honestly, I can't remember it off the top of my head. I think they are like spies or something and like there's like a fake relationship that this guy goes into, but he's like a spy, but then she's also an agent for like something else. The spy doesn't know that the agent's an agent and the agent doesn't know that the spy is a spy or something along those lines. And they like have a fake family, but I heard it's a great time. Everyone loves these books. I feel like I literally can't go wrong. And I just, I should read it. It's literally gonna take me an hour to read. So that is my Summerween TBR. I'm so pumped about it. I wish I would have gotten some merch. Maybe it's not too late. It's not too late, it's never too late. Then I have two other books that I want to, that are potentials on a TBR if I end up reading everything that I've already talked about. The first one is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El, El Motar and Max Gladstone. This book intrigues me so much. I was out at a bakery the other day and I saw this girl reading this book in line at the bakery and piqued my interest and I remembered I had it and now I wanna read it. I don't really know what this what this book is about again. I think it is dystopian literature and for some reason I am just, I am so intrigued by dystopian literature currently. I, I wanna know what this book is about. I feel like I am in this mood to just like read a dystopian novel and this is probably the book for me. It sounds intriguing to me and I know everyone loves it and I'm really, really interested in it. So that is that one. And then the last book I have on my TBR is is, is, and I'm so excited about this, Daisy Hates. I wanted to read this book last year, okay? I read Magnolia Parks last year and I really, really, really liked it. And I just feel like summer is the time of contemporary romance, okay? I at least need one contemporary romance in my life per summer. 
and this is the one for me this summer. I really, really, really want to read it, especially in the, in the fact that I am back in my Love Island phase. I'm watching the messy Brits. I'm reading books about British people being alive and trying to figure out love. It is my favorite genre of anything. Young, hot British people trying to find love. That is my genre, okay? This is that. This is about young, hot British people trying to find love. I know this one. I think it's more of like a hate to love romance. Like they're not a gang, but like I think that there's some bad boy behavior going on in here. Um, I read the first like few chapters last year. It's a romance between Daisy and Christian in the um, Magnolia Parks universe. Christian was a baddie. He was a bad boy. So I'm really interested to see how I like this book. I really, really like Magnolia Parks, but I feel like this is gonna add a little bit of a different flavor. And I'm super, super excited about it. Really want to get to this one, if not in July, then in August. But I feel like this is the book that I'm gonna pick up after I finish. Um, everything I know about love and go through Summerween. I probably will pick this one up. So yeah, that guys is the TBR. Look how big of a stack that is. There's absolutely zero, zero percent chance I'm going to be able to read all of these things this month, but we have a really great variety. So yeah, I, I hope you guys all have such a great and wonderful day and in, have a great reading month in July. If you've made it this far in the video, comment down below a pumpkin because summer ween, baby. Let me know what you are reading in July or what you are looking forward to reading in July and I will see you guys in the comments below. Peace out, Girl Scout. See you in my next video. Bye, babies. Peace and love.